Welcome to WROL Broadcast. I am Hate Mail, and with me today we have a whole host of characters. We have Kage. Hello. After Dark. And we have <laughs> <laughs> Doombox. Hello. We have Loot. Back the truck up. up. And we have a very special guest, and I keep wanting to call him Sugar Bear, but he actually goes by Aqua Bear. <laughs> How's it going, hey Mail? How's it going, guys? And he is the leader of hey, Atlantis. Alpha. Brother, you have a good radio voice. Ah, he's the best voice. Yeah, yeah, I've been told I have a face for radio. That's not an uncommon uh, compliment. We uh, we need to get him and uh, SBO on the same podcast. Just have them talk back and forth. Mm. <laughs> Don't sit <tell> us. <laughs> we can do that. And he is the host of Atlantis After Dark. If you have not checked it out. I strongly strongly discourage you too because it's a lot a lot better done than our <laughs> podcast. <laughs> You'll oh, realize no, just no. how bad we slack. No, no, you guys are the leaders. You guys are the experts. We're in the we're in the rearview mirror here. If by experts at half-assing a podcast and pumping it out for the masses is a good Absol- definition, there you go. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> we just cut as many corners as we can, man. We will use children to pump out our podcast if we can. <laughs> I don't know. Apparently, there's a big rumor that kids play our raids for us, so there's always that. Really? There actually are a few that have wives and children play for them, so that isn't entirely untrue. So. <laughs> <laughs> but we don't keep our kids in cages. My goodness. Listen to this mamby pamby passive talk. We all know why we're here. Let's not stand on ceremony. Let's get into the meat and potatoes. I was going to say we had a rare DP sighting, but then as soon as we asked him if he wanted to come on the podcast, he disappeared. Though I hear on Atlantis After Dark, as you may or may not know, it is R-rated, so there is some DP on that show, but it's more of the airtight kind. Yeah, it's. I don't know if you would call it. Well, I I guess airtight is one way to describe it, yes. (laughs) So, So let's get into it. Uh, Doombox, you wanted to start about your overall rate impressions, since you're a little more neutral than the rest of us, so why don't you go right ahead? Yeah, let me go ahead and uh, quit the palette of our listener base, because I do not want to have to talk after Sugar Bear, because man, my voice is bad enough as it is without having him by comparison. Um, so yeah, the raid, in my opinion... Like, we've had Scarecrow Raid before. It's not really necessarily anything new. But at the same time, with the changes they made to the MVP energy, coupled with the fact that despite people's rosters growing, a lot of people still seem to have some issues because some characters like Steppenwolf, like Owlman, haven't really been openly available for a long time. I mean, I can see where a lot of people have been having issues with this raid. Now, me personally, I figure if you had the developed roster, it was more just tedious than anything and honestly as far as the energy goes a good amount of us have more energy than we could ever possibly use plus they reverted the decision later on after reading feedback so i'm kind of i'm kind of neutral in that corner too because for me it wasn't as big of an issue but i do understand it was an issue for other people so all in all i would say poor execution if they got rid of the scarecrow raid I'm sure everyone would be fine with it because honestly the hit chance down is just an annoying mechanic. But at the same time it's also not impossible to work around and it's just any other raid. People hated Superboy Prime and he was literally just punch it really hard. So, you know, it is what it is. But that's just more or less the neutral stance, the base level, the, the common ground that we can all agree on that there are some issues. Some of them aren't as big as people are making them out to be. But understandably they are still issues for people but i know that some of you guys have some rather strong feelings so i'll go ahead and uh, you know give up the floor to the rest of the cast aqua bear if you want to you're part of the kingdom of alliance or kingdom of atlantis excuse me and why don't you just give us a quick for those of you that don't know you a quick uh, background of your history with dcl and a little bit about your alliance and then your thoughts on raids as a whole sure sure uh, well, I am the Aqua Bear, uh, as most of you uh, may know me as the host of Atlantis After Dark, the Atlanteans Alliance Group, uh, a subsidiary of the Atlantis Alliance Group. Um, I've been playing the game pretty much since day one. Um, 
I, I guess my roster is pretty good. People tell me that all the time. Um, I only have 25 characters less than level 70, gear level 11. Um, so I, I think I'm doing something right. Um, I bumped into a lot of these guys over here at the uh, Atlanteans Alliance group when we were still uh, Black Lantern Corps. And uh, we kind of splintered off and did our own thing, and, and here we are. Um, as far as my thoughts on the raids go, um, I'm mostly in agreement with you guys on, on, on the ins and the outs of it. Whether it's Superboy Prime or whether it's Scarecrow, you know, there's always a hill to climb, right? That's what this thing is. It's a treadmill. And um, I, I, I guess I thought maybe Scarecrow was initially scary, but because of last year's raids, I think those uh, really kind of set the tone. But I think once we found the groove, uh, especially in the Atlanteans Alliance group, everything just kind of fell into place for us. Uh, it was really a matter of maximizing the best tunes on the, pos on the best possible teams for each day. Uh, we really thought that the Martians were uh, incredible uh, as, as a comp to use together, and we thought that Adam was junk. Uh, surprisingly, we also thought that uh, Harley Quinn, quite vexing, did more damage uh, than uh, her counterparts did, which uh, we, we thought was a, a great surprise. Yeah, the um, the Martians definitely pulled their weight. I pretty much used the same team against every boss in every battle. Yeah. Through most of the raid, at least the last two days. I don't really pay any attention the first two days that much. <laughs> yeah. Which has always been a gripe of mine with raids, which I'm sure Lou to get into. And before we turn to you, Lou, Kage, why don't you, I know you had strong feelings as well. What were your thoughts on this raid? Well, yeah, so the I've always had this criticism of Raid, and, you know, I'm pretty black-pilled. I know they're never going to change it. They don't listen to feedback. And the reason why they, you know, they tell you things like, oh, we, we have your best interests in mind, da-da-da. No, don't listen to it. Don't buy it. Um, at the end of the day, it, it's all about the bottom line. And as long as people are willing to spend money on the Raids, um, they're not going to change it. They have no incentive to change it. So, um, you know, I'm all about, you know, doing things for the devs, making sure they get paid. But those devs, you know, they get scraps from whatever WB gives them. Uh, you know, I don't like the four-day grind. I wish they'd uh, bring it down to three. But apparently, you know, whatever metrics they're using, they find that the four days is most profitable. Um, I don't mind having to gear you know, different characters for different strategies. At the end of the day, though, you're just pressing auto um, for several hours uh, with the same team, with the same spawn, you know, same spawning bosses. So you're playing at the same pace that they, that WB sets for you. You're not, you don't get to play for one day, hit your 500 uh, million milestone, you know, and get out. Uh, the other thing that really annoys me is how inefficient it is to kill the level 150 bosses with the provided characters. So, you know, either shorten the milestones, nerf the bosses, or give better characters uh, to climb through. The previous raid they had was really good because they gave you the 10 character bonus, the 10, you know, the Batman CC. And that was good. That made the grind a lot better. But at the end of the day, you're still grinding, and the frustrations of hit chance down was, you know, salt in a, you know, pretty pretty deep wound. So, you know, it, it's it's more annoying than it any and it is than anything. So, I would say restructure the whole thing, and make the uh, milestone climbing a lot easier. I'm glad they brought back the um, energy uh, the energy MVP stuff, um, but. You know, they still need to go a lot further than that. Loot, I'll hand it to you. Okay. Um, where do I start? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know where to start. At the beginning, man. <laughs> All right. So if everybody doesn't know me already, I'm Loot, and I'm pretty much a maniac when it comes to the raid. Uh, I would say most of the owls are, yeah, actually all the owls really pulled their weight, but I will say a few uh, players by name 
that just totally devote their life to the raid. And it, I feel like I lost, I feel like I lost time, like in my life because of this particular past raid. <laughs> this was probably one of, this is the first raid in a very long time that I actually had raid fatigue to where I wanted, I pretty much didn't, I just didn't even want to play. Like by the time Sunday came around, I don't know if anybody wanted to play. It was just that bad. And then I don't know what got into the number two team uh, villains, but what were you guys thinking? That was crazy. Pushing us a little bit. Why? You're going to lose anyway. So, What's the point? So Alexi, Alexi is quitting, you know, and he's deleting the app. And uh, villains thought it was a good send off for him was uh, try to win raids from owls. That's what they were doing. Well, that's good to know. Alexi, I, I totally like you as a person, so I'm sorry that you're leaving. But uh, I'm also very happy that you guys aren't going to do that again. Because <laughs> it's just a waste of time, and it's a waste of money. And at the end of the day, I, I don't know. It, it's mind-boggling to me. Just like, just everybody just chill with the raid. It's a waste of time. I almost want to boycott the raid. And I think a lot of people would be on my on the same page, except they have the rewards, which are pretty good. So a lot of people aren't willing to give that up. But I think the only way to get anything changed is what Kage said. We have to stop spending on the raid. And money is a big issue, right? So if we don't give them money, they might want to change something so that we start giving them money. And they I think the only way to do that mm -hmm. is for people to stop playing the raid. See, I don't think that's ever going to happen, though, because even if... It's not. If you get, let's just say, and this is optimistic, you can get a third of the owls to not spend, which I still think that's a mountain to climb, because <laughs> obviously we're called to the court of issues for a reason. Um, it, there's still going to be a million other alliances going to be like, hey, owls aren't pushing. We all got to push, yeah, and then they're owls, all going to fight. Mm. Owls are willing to spend hundreds, if not thousands, to win the raid. They don't even care about the raid payout. So I think that's going to be enough to set, you know, set a precedence. And let's say Aqua Bear come, walks away from this podcast like, you know, the Owls had a good point. I'm going to talk to my alliance mates, and we're going to join in on that. So that's like your upper echelon of spenders being like, oh, hey, we're not spending. You know, we probably do, I don't know what, 70% of the game spending, give or take. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Nah, when you look at the metrics, not really. But no, you don't think so. No, because you figure the I game... I think there's a lot of people that spend money. Like, even, like, that little bit of money, it adds up. Yeah, because yeah. you look at the total revenue, it's about between... Actually, it's been up, as I've been tracking it for the last couple months. Yeah, I think, and what, they're getting, like, $300,000 per month? system. So yeah. it's about 600000 yeah. a month. And you figure, yeah. when you... Even, even on the... I mean, even on the We're high not, side, we, we probably do you know, 20000 in a month on a big month, 25000 mm. maybe. Um, so we're still a blip on the radar in comparison to the rest of the community. I guess uh, there'd be a very curious project to figure out who does the most spending and, you know, agitate them enough to <laughs> stop Well, spending. but I think, I think it's a lot of smaller <laughs> transactions. So, I mean, you, you add up, you figure raids. Most, I would say a good chunk of people probably buy at least a couple of those $5 packs. That's a lot of money when you spread think, it out amongst 30,000, 40,000 people. I think I, think I know the, a guy who spends it all by himself. <laughs> I, think, I think the bread and butter transactions, though, come from the shop packs themselves, like the, the, the uh, character packs and um, the $99 packs. I don't think they make most of their money on the raids. Well, they get money from us burning gems on raids. And, that, and then oh, yeah. they get money off people buying the skin. They get money off people buying the raid energy. Because a lot of people, mm -hmm. even free-to-play, buy those. So, mm -hmm. I mean, not, not free-to-play, but the super minimal to spend. So, I don't, I don't think owls not participating in raids will say, yeah, we're not going to participate in raids, and then we're going to buy, like, six packs of Black Hand when he comes out. So, <laughs> it's not going <laughs> to sure. matter. <laughs> so, let's yeah, you need to, like besides the money, let's talk about, like, some of the 
more with some of the bigger issues of the raid. So I think my least favorite part of the raid wasn't even Scarecrow. It was really the log, like the... Um, the shared bosses. The shared bosses. Oh, so yeah. there was a time during this raid, and it's happened before, but it never was really... It was never this bad. Like, this was really bad. 20 out of 20 were all shared bosses. Mm. What does that mean? That means I can't spawn a boss for myself. Yeah. At all. Because there's 20 shared bosses on the screen. I saw a screenshot from you, Hate Mail, that you gave to Warner Brothers. You gave to the developers, showing them a full list of 20. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's just ridiculous it's not okay like they need to we know that they're not going to change certain things we know that they're not going to change the economics they're not going to change the duration maybe they'll change something that i'll bring up in a minute but it, we need to like get them to change what they maybe can change and that is something that's a quality of life improvement that needs to change because the raid is not playable in that form and it's not enjoyable. I don't want to take days and days and days to get through the raid. I want to get through it as fast as humanly possible. I hit 500, and guess what? I stop because I don't care about anything else in that solo track except just get me my rebirth tokens. The fragments, they don't matter to me. I buy them all anyway. The skin, well, I'm definitely going to, if I hit 500, I'm probably in the top 500. The legendary essence, every single one of my tunes is L5. I don't need it. So I don't care about that. Aqua Bear, did you it's have just... same issues with shared bosses and what? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, and I suppose the, the biggest question that I have is, and I've thought about this a lot too, really, how, how would you fix it? Separate list, shared boss list versus a. Yeah, regular boss I suppose list. so. I suppose so. But you're asking the devs then to introduce a new element to the game. Well, I also thought about this because, and yeah. correct me if I'm wrong, Doom or Kage, if you remember, or even Loot. Um, didn't they used to have a finisher reward? They did. Yeah. Yeah. There was. Yeah. So bring something like that back because right now I have no incentive because I get you know little crap shares. And then also, secondarily, most of the time, I mean, some people disagree with me on this, but usually I always think the level 150s and to a lesser extent the 130s are a waste of time. So I usually don't even do them. I spawn them and mm -hmm. share them. I meet, I tag them and share them, and then I move on because it always seems to be slower. I spend more energy than they're worth. So yeah. maybe make those worth doing a little more and people wouldn't be as inclined to just leave them. Yeah, and I've always thought that, you know, level 90s were probably the best bargain for your buck because you can they knock are. them out. You get a pretty decent reward out of them. So, okay, let's go there. I, I like where this is going. So let's go in that direction a little bit. Sure. So the best bosses in the game are, what is it, 50, it starts at 51, right? Yeah, 51, 51 is like 850,000 yeah. yeah. or something like that. So there's the 51, the 68, and the 90, non-legendary. My proposal is that they remove the gate to, from day three and allow us to start ramping up the bosses at our pace. So on day one, if I hit a certain threshold, my bosses should automatically change to the next tier. And then when I hit that threshold, it should hit the next tier so that I can get done with the raid as soon as I want to. Not when they want me to, but when I want to finish the raid on my time. And what do you guys the, think about that? Well, one of the arguments against it was the 150s and 130s, the servers couldn't handle it that early. But if they're not spawning, those could stay on the same spawn gates. But people that want to kind of blitz through, oh, that would be so nice. And I honestly think that would be economically in Warner Brothers' favor because a lot of the people that go crazy trying to get the highest score would have to get they would get their scores earlier so they would have to start earlier so you would see though you would see crazy numbers though in solo like three or four billion <laughs> 
Yeah, it, it would definitely be Gives interesting. Gives people to see. another incentive to keep grinding. People yeah. like to yeah. grind. I personally yeah. don't, but people like it. Um, so I would oh, love to see that change happen. Um, may I chime in with an idea that I have? Sure. Yes, definitely. So what I'm thinking, right, is that one of the biggest problems with the shared lists is, like you guys said, the 130s and to some extent the 150s, so that's kind of variable on, you know, how fast it takes you to kill them, uh, are really not worth it to do. So what if, and this might sound a little wacky, but hear me out, right? What if they make it so that the spawn locations are different? So, for example, if you're grinding just, like, let's say the last node of Chapter 1, the fan favorite, you can only spawn normal bosses. You can't spawn legendary bosses. It's only when you're doing heroic nodes that legendary bosses start to spawn. Because then you can go out of your way to seek them out if you want to. But if you don't want to and you would prefer to just farm on the lower ones, then you can just stay normal. By that way, people will be a lot less likely to share a bunch of bosses that aren't worth your time. You can pursue them if you want to pursue them. You know, it's like there's an area that's very clear to do it. And then it has that equal, okay, well, you're getting a bigger boss, you're paying a bigger price because of the energy difference. So it actively discourages people from unnecessarily going after those bosses by rewarding people who are actively doing it but not punishing people who are not. Because then, well, now you don't have 80 bosses being shared all over the place. Your list stays mostly clear. I think I like it. I like it, too. The other thing yeah, that's I, was, good. I do like that, I think that's a really good idea. And then the only other thing that I could think of is reduce the health. 300, what is it, 300 million HP? Yeah, that's yes, ridiculous. on the 150. <laughs> 300 million. I mean, it was fine during the 10x raid with Azrael, but... <laughs> well, that, that raid doesn't count. Yeah. That was... That was that's an outlier. That was not just the disgusting. I mean, it was giving us something that we'll never get again. We I were don't know. Spoiled. The one with Artemis as the bonus X five. That one was that was a smooth raid too. It was, but I mean, come on, Batman CC at ten X. Yeah, I don't never yeah, do it again. Uh, but yeah, eighteen I'll million you, damage. <laughs> I'd have almost rather them given me a Batman CC rework than make him a ten X. Yeah, me too. Well, that's something we all want. <laughs> sure. You know what uh, raid was really smooth? Hmm. Remember that really early raid where Cyborg was a 5x and you could just charge cannon bosses for like 20 million health each time? Uh, that was, that was oh, a yeah. one. D yeah. But that one I remember had an issue of I couldn't spawn solo bosses. So I only did Alliance boss. That was like a thing for a couple months where... There was like this glitch where people just couldn't spawn bosses. Well, that is one big improvement, I will say, this raid over the Scarecrow raid last year. Because if you remember correctly, we didn't have a November and December raid. They I, Partly because of the holidays, but also partly because, remember, there were so many bugs that the raid was just... Yeah, they took nightmare. it off. So at least we didn't have horrible bugs this raid. We forgot how buggy and bad they were for a long period of time. They have been improved. Uh, there was some very serious lag issues this raid. There were, I was just going to say. Uh, my tunes were just standing there. They were like yeah. having a conversation or something. They were talking to each other. I don't know what the hell was going on, but they were not battling. I think yeah, was, they're ordering no takeout, you know. Was yeah. that mostly Saturday? Because I, I thought I saw some of that, but I didn't play much on Saturday and... I didn't ever experience that. So. You missed it. See, you weren't playing at that time. I remember because you were like, you guys are having issues? I don't see issues. Oh, wait, I'm not really playing right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know. So, that I think that was really the, the things that I wanted to talk about. You know, the MVP thing, I'll be honest with you guys, it doesn't really affect me. Energy is not really an issue for me, so... But I do sympathize with everybody else, and I think changing it back was the right thing to do. I'm kind of mixed on that because, on one hand, it will make it make it keeps life from being too expensive because you can farm solo. Then I really thought about it, and then there was that post by Ganthit, aka Beast Trees. All these people keep changing their names. They got to stop with that. 
Ab Cuts is some dash, uncanny dash or something now. It's like, just pick a name and stick with it, people. You don't change your name. Because I can barely remember people's names to begin with, so. Um, sorry, side sand it. But the, is that what B-Tree is now? He's Ganthet? Yeah. They, they confuse me when they Yeah, but go on, go on with your... But go on with your... But anyway, with the energy. So, I, thought, I was thinking about this, and he made a long, interesting post on that. And right now, you can pretty much, if you are even remotely intelligent with your energy, you'll never run out of blue energy. And then in return, you'll stock back up on alliance energy. Alliance energy, depending on how hard you're competing, you always run out of. But with the solo energy, if they made it so it was limited, they wouldn't be able to farm as much alliance energy. So in turn, I would probably spend a lot less. Because right now I'm dropping insane gems every raid. So I kind of almost selfishly want them to keep it the way it was, because... Now I may occasionally have to buy blue energy, but I think it's going to be cheaper overall, and people won't have enough energy to push as hard against us. So it might actually work out. That's that a good point. I mean, I do use no, a little over 100,000 <laughs> gems every single raid. That's psychotic. You never want people to spend more money. <laughs> well, it's just it's less grinding. Money is time. That's the, that's the way I look at it. That's it. You know what I miss? Name of the game. I miss back when they gave PVE energy as one of the prizes. Now, that was the golden age. You still that do on the big awesome. box, but minimal. Didn't the 150 drop like 10 or 20 or something? Yep, 10. So, yeah. back in the day, this is way back in the day, mind you, this is like one of the first raids, uh, level 90s would drop 15, 130s would drop 20, and then 150s would drop 25. And then, of course, once you got down to it, I think like the one below that, whatever it was, 86, 68, also dropped uh, 10. But still, I mean, that definitely supplemented a lot of things. I wish they would bring that back. Yeah, <sighs> yeah that but, was nice. And Lou had to go, so he um, says goodbye. I'm glad we had Lou's input on it. I, I feel bad for you guys being owls, having to spend all that money. My alliance had a real easy time. We only ever aimed for top 50 because, you know, whatever. It's We're not going to play with the top 10. That's way too much money. We're a bunch of poor people. We're dolphins, not whales. <laughs> Aqua so, Bear had the best, the best suggestion. Just shoot for number 9 or number 10. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Whether you finish in second or ninth, it doesn't matter. <laughs> nah. Number 9. Meh. I, I like what we do now, where we just climb as high as we can. Like, we'll, we'll cut it pretty close to the top ten sometimes, but, like, it's not ever something we actually aim for. But this time, it was way easy. I think the other part that brought people down about this was the fact that we were fighting over Adam, of all people. Like, last raid, we were fighting over <laughs> Asriel. Now, that was yeah. a raid. Everyone wanted that prize. Oh, yeah. But this time around, we, like, barely grinded the Alliance boss at all, and we just walked into, like, 33rd place. We are just like, yeah, okay. Yeah, whatever. You know? Normally, it's like, oh, the last day, we're all getting in, we're all sitting there. I think after your raid, we climbed, like, 74 million Alliance points in, like, an hour and a half or something like that. We, we went from 74th to 29th place by the end of it. Now, that was a fun push. We were going crazy. But this time around... It was chump change. It was easy. And I don't even want to... I don't, I don't even think I have Adam unlocked yet. I think he's still sitting on my screen grayed out. He's a slow guy so, for me. Yeah, his kid was terrible. He's a no That's the best place me. to have him. <laughs> so, yeah, I will say, though, I know last raid, the things were insane, but I was very happy that we had that glitch, and I wanted to talk to you about that, because I thought I heard you say the same thing, Aqua Bear, that you were happy that on the fourth day we got the gift of the raid glitch, so everybody could quit for a little bit. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, look, I, you guys mentioned it earlier at the, top of the, at the top of the show, but, you know, raids are, the way I describe them is like two thick bricks of concrete that you have to lug around all, all the time, and it's a four-day you know, sprint not a marathon, right? Um, <laughs> for us, you know, being able to close out early, which we did again this last go around over in the uh, Atlanteans Alliance group, we actually quit on day three. Once we hit, you know, a billion, we said, you know what? We're good because just like you said, uh, whether you finish in second or ninth, you know, the rewards are the same. Um, and I, I think 
you just get tired of living off of your own urine and breadcrumbs for four days. You know, <laughs> it shouldn't be like that. It just shouldn't be like that. I mean, um, speak for yourself, but whatever. <laughs> well, yeah, urine is an acquired taste. I'll, I'll, I'll say that. Uh, Watched a lot of Bear Girls in my day. You wouldn't believe it when you watch it the first time on TV, but after <laughs> about the fifth or sixth grade, you're like, hmm, all right, yeah. You start, like, eating differently to help. Uh, you know what? I'll just end it there. Don't worry about that. Um, yeah, yeah. See, I was told this is PG-13. I got uh, to watch my language here, so. Uh, we can we can censor it out. Uh, you're <laughs> not the editor, Tim. And I no, want to right, get it okay. out in the morning. So. <laughs> Let me be frank. Um, Kate Mail can edit it out. I, I don't actually have to do anything. <laughs> right on. I feel your pain, though, Hate, because I have to edit that stuff, too, and, boy, I'll, I'll tell you. It's a you. lot more work than people seem to realize. It is. It really is. And the amount of effort, and that's a good transition as we uh, we end our raid talk. Does anybody have any final thoughts on raids before we talk about uh, Superior Podcast stars? <laughs> um, you know what? I actually do, thinking off the top of my head after listening to what everyone was saying. I People will say that I am a WB favoritist, like a sympathizer. I, I always take WB side. This is not true. I'm actually very critical of WB on a lot of things. But that being said, I'm sure you guys saw that poll that came out that was like, do you enjoy raiding? And a very, very, very big majority said, no, I only do it for the rewards. Mm. In defense of WB, like the fact that there was more no, I just do it for the rewards than just plain no is actually a decent sign. There's things that are wrong with it, make no question about it, but they are fixable things. So it's bad now, but a lot of things started out bad. Wrath Arena was trash when it first started out way, way, way back when, and, you know, it still is, but less so now, you know? Character events were garbage. Now they're decent. Give it time. I mean, it's been out for a year, but there are steps that can be made. So hold out hope. But also, if there's never another Scarecrow raid, that's also perfectly fine. I will not argue with that. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, the Scarecrow part doesn't bother me as much as just the... Actually, I kind of did. This is the first raid, the last thing I'll say on this. The fact this that was... you can have Owlman and still miss and get stunned? Dude, come on. Yeah, and the, a lot of the matches, it, it was so much faster if you buffed first, so you had to take it off auto, put it back on auto. If you wanted to clear really, really quick. And then I will say that this was the first, and this is when I, you know it's bad. This was the first raid I've ever seen loot begging Ballsy, can we quit now? Because <laughs> we weren't sure. We were like at the last couple hours. And it was, okay, I don't think it's mathematically possible. And Ballsy's like, well, let's just go one more hour. And loot's like, no, I, I need to quit. I need to quit. <laughs> I've never seen loot. Loot's usually, let's go. If the character lists weren't so feast and famine, it wouldn't be as much of an issue. But we always get these raids where we have, like, basically zero damage dealers, and then we're facing down some super annoying boss, and it sucks. So, whatever. Work on that, WB. You can uh, pay us royalties once you fix your stuff. We'll take full credit. Thank you. Moving on. Let's talk about this superior <laughs> podcast and Water Bear's sweet, sweet, dulcet tones that so, tickle your ears. Water Bear. Water Bear. Sugar Bear. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> You have a thousand names. Gummy bear. My bad. Gummy bear. How can we help you? What's up? What's, <laughs> tell us about your stuff, man. Uh, hey, man. What, so, what kind of yeah. How much is it? Like 200 bucks? 300 bucks? What? I, I, I'm sorry. I missed the question. How much is your microphone, dude? How much is my microphone? Yeah. Um, it's. Well, let me ask you this. Which one? I've got more than one microphone, I man. Oh, Jesus Christ. Ooh. What are you using right now? So right now I'm using my Yeti Blue. Um, it's probably my favorite mic just because I don't need uh, a mixer to run through to a sound card to my PC. I could just plug it in USB and off to the race as I go. Um, I do use a couple of tricks behind it now. Uh, I have a self-isolation uh, shield that sits behind it that kind of reduces and dampens the echo. I've also got some... Uh, uh, soundproofing on the wall in front of me, which does help a lot. Uh, people make fun of my blue curtains, but they're nice and thick and they absorb sound and they sit right in front of me too. So, 
Uh, there's a lot of little tricks that I employ, you know, putting rugs on the floor, that kind of business. Um, I think it just kind of helps uh, shape the uh, overall sound uh, in the room. Um, some of my other microphones, I've got, I've got a Shure SH-52, uh, SH-55 series. Those are the Elvis mics. Did you see the, the really big ones? I've got a couple of nice condensers. Um, I like Shure microphones. I'm not sure why. Uh, it was just something that kind of started out in uh, my youth when I was uh, a band geek and later on in life when I turned into a rock and roller. Um, just a preference. See, we use unsure microphones. And <laughs> <laughs> Kage usually is inside some type of small room with lots of echo. And that's true. I'm in a squeaky chair in Doom. Not exactly sure. I think Doom just chews on his mic during the episodes usually. So, I mean, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, well, I'll tell you, you know, yeah. Fancy stuff you're talking about there. I mean, Yogi sure. Bear, folks, smarter <laughs> than the average bear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'll, I'll say this. You know, you don't have to go out and get the big fancy microphones. It does help. But as long as you, you know, take a little bit of time and research and just kind of, you know, put some money towards a self isolation shield or put a couple of uh, sound tiles on the wall in front of you. It makes a huge difference. I see my problem with most of those mics is that I can't stop moving around. So right. I tend to talk oh, whenever slow beast was here, he was real big on audio quality. And so he, yeah. he got the, the nice desk mics and I would just keep wandering away from it. And then, so he eventually forced me to get a headset. Right. Right. Yeah, I, and I have to admit, I am somewhat of a ringer. Um, I've done professional voiceover work. Uh, you might remember me from such training videos as sexual harassment. Um, I've also done a few advertising spots here and there. So I'm not totally unfamiliar with the territory. I've already had the equipment. Like I said, being on a rock and roll band for years, uh, not active now, but uh, has really helped. So, I mean... It, kind of a ringer for this thing. I just never did a podcast before. Believe it or not, I never did it a day before we did our very first episode. Wow, that's impressive. Because it definitely um, sounds uh, super professional quality. Where can people find your episode? And I'll have They can the find show. us. Yeah, absolutely. They can find us uh, anywhere you get your favorite podcasts, including Spreaker, uh, YouTube, uh, Apple, and Spotify. Uh, just search for Atlantis After Dark, and you are guaranteed to find it. Pull it up in your search bar, plug in your headphones, just press play, baby. And not to be confused with Kage's OnlyFans, Kage After Dark. <laughs> How, your OnlyFans work on an offer wall? <laughs> we do. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I would do. I would, I would put an offer wall up there. So what um what is what is Atlantis After Dark for people who are unfamiliar? What 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 can they expect to find? What is your uh, so your niche? Right. So Atlantis After Dark. Um, I'll start back at the very beginning. It was kind of a long time in the making. Uh, I had my eyes on developing something like that for some time. Uh, always wanted to do a podcast. I did some research, uh, buckled it up, and then I actually just kind of posted it to the crew. I'm like, hey, what do you guys think about doing this? Uh, the Atlanteans encouraged me to do it and afforded me the opportunity to make that dream a reality. Uh, the truth of the matter is, I treat Atlantis after dark just like a bunch of pals hanging out at the pub. Uh, the reason it's R-rated is because I want us to be able to say F-bombs or talk about you know, anything that you know, may skew to the left of center a little bit. Um, as long as it sounds like a bunch of guys and a bunch of gals getting together and having fun at the pub, to me, that's the most accurate representation of that podcast and our alliance that I could give you. Just because in my estimation, uh, I could play anywhere, but I'd much rather play with people that I really enjoy spending time with and having fun with, you know? I think, you know, having a, a podcast like that, uh, that deals in DC Legends that's kind of unique to our framework uh, is probably not only one of the best outlets we have creatively, but also offers us, and I've said this to Black Flash today, it's our greatest recruiting tool. It really is. Oh, I would definitely say that. I mean, Owls gained, uh, the podcast helped 
tremendously in recruitment. I mean, yeah. Now it's not. It's really. I don't think it makes as big of a difference. But early yeah. on, it, I think it helped us build our build our core. So yeah, you're right. It's definitely a, a great recruiting tool. And who comes up with all the bits? Or is that, is that a group effort? Or is that a, because you guys come up with some hilarious commercials? Yeah, yeah. So um, I'm kind of a stickler for the format. You know, I, I, I like to put out a road map for us to follow. Uh, if you listen to the shows, you'll see, you know, you can pull it apart if you really listen. We start with, a, you know, a, a hot open and an intro, and then a, we do a little bit of ballyhoo. Uh, we get right into it. And then I like to split things up with, you know, bits um, and then an advertising spot, which we host our own uh, podcast so we don't ever get external um, people to come in. Because I said, I'm not going to sell Manscaping 3.0 I'm not going to tell you which shaving cream to use. I don't care. You know, I, I want to keep this as free as possible for as long as possible. Uh, that way we can do these kinds of bits. And when you ask, you know, who comes up with it, I would like to tell you that it's as much a team effort as anything else that we do. Um, I'll tell you, I'm the first guy that's going to tell you, I'm the guy fiddling the knobs. I'm the guy moving discussion. Uh, but I'm also the guy who does uh, probably 90% of the bits just because I have the equipment, I have the DAW, I have the sound effects. Uh, people tell me I have a face for radio, um, all that good jazz. So I I'm probably the one creating and producing 90% of the physical content. But when it comes to the ideas for said content, we all pitch in. So I have a couple of characters that I like to use. Uh, one is Merle Nelson. Uh, Merle is, uh, is basically a DC Legends playing cowboy. And uh, he has strong opinions about things. And the best part about doing these bits is we get to make people say whatever we want them to say. So if I have a cowboy who plays DC Legends, what would he be ticked off about? Would he be ticked off about the fact that Superman is probably the greatest hero in all of DC and yet he's halfway down the rung in the roster. Uh, I don't know. I think he does. I think my favorite was your uh, Grodd. I think it was a bet. Oh, office. yeah. That was, that was the best. The Wukong Animal Hospital. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wukong was pretty fun to do. That was um, Yeah, we, we got a lot of fun. We got one coming up on Sunday's show, by the way, uh, that you're not going to want to miss. You want to talk about the... Uh, MVP point debacle. Boy, don't miss that one. That one's a good one. Well, good. I am excited to listen to it. It definitely um, gives me a good laugh. And the other, I yeah. was listening to it during a particularly annoying work day, and <laughs> I had uh, I had it in my ear, and a colleague was walking through the hallway right when I burst into laughter and <laughs> startled them. So <laughs> it was great. I won't take credit for that. So we will, unless anybody else has anything else to wrap up, the Bucks game is on, and my team is finally actually looking good for the first time in a long time. So I need to get on watching that. So Yeah, there you go. Tom Brady. Yeah. yeah, I never wanted to be a Tom Brady fan, but I can't help it. <laughs> <laughs> you, Honestly, he's the GOAT, dude. That, that podcast sounds really nice. Hanging out with people you like and enjoy playing with. We need to try that because half of us hate each other. Yeah. I yeah. mean, it spices the show up. <laughs> I mean, give them three years. I mean, come on. We're like an old married couple now. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, they're, yeah. they're, still, in, they're still in the honeymoon. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Man, back when we first started, not we as in Hate Mail and Kage. They came later. I'm talking like the way, way original oddsmen. Oh, man. Dude, we are so stiff, but we are all so friendly, and it was so boring, and it was awful. And then now we're just... It was a good podcast, just the audio quality was... Wow. Yeah, I know. Hey, we're new. We didn't, we didn't have... That's because DP would never give up Discord. Yeah, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, he just won't do yeah, it. <laughs> um, but yeah, definitely listen in on the podcast. You know, it's uh, it is for eighteen and above, so no Ursa minors. But all in all, it's gonna be a really good time. I listened to it myself. I personally enjoyed it. You know, it's not really my brand of humor, Do but Doom I was, found it great. Doom was ready to retire the podcast right after the I first episode. <laughs> I'm no not joke. kidding. 
I'm not kidding at all. That's, that's, that's not even a joke. Uh, hey, man, was like, oh, man, these guys are kind of, uh, oh, man, I was about to swear. These guys are kind of kicking our butts here in this uh, podcast business. And I was like, okay, we can just retire. I mean, whatever. <laughs> We need, we need to renegotiate no contracts with WROL so we can allow for F-bombs and swearing. I mean, we can, oh. but the, 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 the minimal um, ad reward payments that we are able to use for contests have to be nuked. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. the main problem with it. It's unfortunate. But, man, having country bears here is really bringing them... <laughs> Bringing the worst out of me, but I, I'm keeping it stable, not making any extra right. work for hate mail. Yeah. But definitely listen in. They are a fantastic podcast. Oh, it is. It is Thank so you well very done. much. And, and, you know, and I'll say this. Atlantis After Dark wouldn't be here if it was not for WROL. So we appreciate the, the rub. Well, thanks for coming on, Aqua Bear. We appreciate it. Everyone. No, uh, thank you. Check it out. The link will be in the show notes. And... I am Hate Mail signing off. Hope you all enjoy raids next month during Thanksgiving. See you guys later. <laughs> Take care. Peace. Hi, everyone. This is Determined Lemon. Thank you for listening to this episode of WROL Broadcast. Please help us out by becoming a patron and getting access to special patron only shows. Just go to patreon.com forward slash WROL Broadcast. We also have DC Face Masks at our store. Please be sure to check them out. Crikey, you don't want to spook him. We've spotted that rare and elusive DPO 427.